What up, Buzz? You tapped in? Okay, Goose, you tapped in too? All right, Chicago, y'all tapped in? All right, boys, let's crack them. Feel like Mike in the fourth with the ball in my hands and I'm taking a shot. I'm the king in the madhouse on Madison, whether I make it or not. Now the crowd going crazy, they watching the play and I'm watching the clock. Got my shot in the air and the buzzer go off and I'm watching it drop. This team did things, MJ shot city six rings. D rolls too big, too fast, too strong history. And we good on that, put Jilla on the track and we good on wax. Three, two, one, everybody say bulls on tap, bulls on tap. Our city pretty and gritty. Benny the bull in the crowd getting hyper and litty. Me, I'm so drippy and slippery, nothing offends me. Banners on banners, we winners. We got the stats in the news. Go and subscribe, hang out with Buzzy and Goose. Tapping with us, we the truth. Jilla just murdered the booth. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bulls on Tap. I am your boy Buzz. I'm joined by my dude Goose, aka Bulls Scripted, and we're here to recap a 106-101 victory over the Oklahoma City Thunder on Neil Funk Night. Goose, it's Neil funk. funk Night. It's getting all sorts of funky. I know, man. How exciting. But before we talk about Neil Funk, be sure you're going on tapsportsnet.com for all your Chicago sports literature and podcasting needs. Following us on Twitter at Bulls on Tap, at on Tap Sportsnet. Following Goose at Bull Scripted, me at Buzz on Tap. Anywhere you can listen to podcasts, you can listen to us. Five star rating and review because that's cool and tough. Go over to the YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hop in the comment section, and let's talk about Bulls dubs. Goose, Bulls shorthanded again tonight. Not only is Zach Levine out, but Javante was out. Um, and that's our career was- night, too. What was that? After a career night, too, you got to watch Javante's best basketball game as an NBA player last night, live in action. How was that? Oh, it was fucking amazing. And I'll tell you what, the the love for that guy throughout the United Center is pretty apparent now. And I hate that Patrick Williams got injured, but, like, silver linings, right? And he's one of them. It's really cool. It's like, what a good story for him. I, I tweeted, I think, yesterday during the game, like, go and hand Javante Green a blank check. I don't care. Like, I don't want that guy going anywhere. Fan favorite, busts his ass every night. And you can argue, even though it's not in numbers, that he has just done a, a lot of the little things that this team might not have won if he didn't do those things, you know? Oh, no. I mean, you heard Stacy tonight when Vooch kind of started getting it going and he was drawing these double and triple teams in the post. He's like, he's looking for Javante. He's used to somebody cutting – back right. door and he's looking for that guy and that that guy's just not there tonight um and to your point like when pat comes back is that something pat's gonna do or is like is that spot javante's at this point it's so okay yeah you know, so I mean, hard to talk you, about that though you're talking about the the gm uh their golden boy here you know number four overall pick um, goes out, you have the emergence of this veteran who's given you that gritty, nasty, um, just killer be killed mentality on every single play. And there's not uh, other than Caruso. I mean, even Lonzo doesn't really have it like every single play. Right. Um, you know, how do you, how do you bench that? Yeah. That's, that's, it's just funny talking about Javante green, a guy that we were paid to take in our number four pick and who we want to start. And funny enough, Daniel Tice ended up back in Boston at the deadline. I know, that's so weird. That, that was wild. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know how you how you bench him. I think it would be a bad call, honestly, even if Pat comes back healthy, at least until Pat shows you he's doing it everywhere. Not that he can't do it everywhere. It's just going to take him a while to get back into the swing of things, right? Well, yeah, I mean, and we need bench scoring. What you want right. from Pat is more scoring. What you want from Javante is more dirty work. So right. um, I think with what Javante's earned, and at least the way that Billy coaches, he he doesn't really play favorites. Like what Billy thinks is right is what Billy thinks is right. So um, I, I think personally that Javante's earned it. And there, there's our Javante moment for the night. Wow, man. Opening segment, too. We didn't even get to talk about Zach Levine being out. We just spent a lot of time on Javante Green. <laughs> Levine misses tonight with a uh, left leg soreness injury again. So general maintenance, they were saying, you know, rest. Um, left leg was bothering him a little bit. Obviously, he had this injury, what was that, about a week and a half. That was when he tweaked his back against the Warriors, right? And then that was a knee injury. 
um, tweaked his left knee, and then now it turned into back. Yeah, now it turned into back spasms, and now it's back to being a knee injury. Are you worried about that? I mean, yeah. I mean, how can you not be? Um, Zach's missed some time. He's played through injuries. Obviously, he had the torn ligament in his hand that he played through. Um, it's not like Zach's not playing through injuries. Like, I definitely mark that down in your notebook, too. We are seeing um, Zach give us his all. He's not, like, shying away from the moment or trying to, you know, like, back out. He wants to be there, but, you know, tonight, games like tonight on back-to-backs against bum teams, as our, as our buddy Joe Cowley would call them. Right. Um, you know, Zach should be able to sit if he has these injuries going on, but – DeMar's playing close to 40 minutes and almost dropping 40 a night. So, um, Zach's in a weird spot because he misses games and the the lore of DeMar just grows further because, (laughs) like, this fourth quarter tonight, man, um, DeMar tweaked his wrist and he's still out here just giving you buckets. Remember how you said, does this make Zach look bad? Like, not bad, but, like, less desirable come uh, contract negotiation time. That's just, that's what DeMar DeRozan's making him look like. I don't know why. It's so odd. I mean, of course I want them to stay together. I don't want Zach going anywhere, but like, oh, no, if, we, he, we, if we, he did Zach. go somewhere as well. Like, our three-point shooting tonight. We, we right. need Zach. We need Zach. But like, if he did go somewhere, it's like this team is still going to win some fucking games because of DeMar DeRozan, man. It, it's nuts. It, it, it's absolutely wild. You know, that's six games in a row of – 30 points and then five games in a row of that of 35 plus points. I think it was. No, he's, he's doing things that only he who shall not be named because we're still not putting those names in the same sentence yet. Um, ever, <laughs> ever. No, exactly. Like, but he's doing those things. Right. Um, and that's, it's baffling. Um, and it's crazy to watch because yeah. the, the shots that he makes are just, I don't know. It, it, You've seen it for, you know, close to 50, 60 games now and still baffling. Right. Uh, 14 for – or 14, I'm sorry, 12 for 24 tonight, 14 for 16 from the free throw line, 38 points, five – yeah, five assists, six rebounds, one steal, two turnovers. So, great night from DeMar. He was minus four in the plus minus, but doesn't fit our narrative tonight, so fuck you, plus minus. Um, and a guy with a huge game too, Vooch. 14 for 25, 0 for 4 from downtown, 3 for 3 from the free throw line. He finishes with 31 and 15. Wow, he had no assists. Goes back to your point. No no (laughs) Javante. No (laughs) Javante. Yeah, so (laughs) no assists for him, but two steals and two blocks. Holy shit, he did have six turnovers, though. Hmm. No Javante. (laughs) Yeah, throw it back there. Don't don't, don't have Javante to throw the ball to? Got to throw it away. I don't know. Um, Got to point out your tweet from yesterday, my man, about the comfort level of Kobe White now that the trade deadline has come and gone. Uh, two big games in a row for our guy, right? I mean, last night he played real well and tonight. Yeah, I mean, he kind of lulled us to sleep in the sense that he waited to the second half of both games to turn it on and really kind of, you know, help us secure the win in both of these games. Um, but last night he went scorching uh, in that second half from the three-point line and definitely uh, contributed to stealing us that win. Um, And then similar thing tonight. Him and DeMar, I mean, because Vooch, I feel like, was kind of quiet in the fourth, all things considered. Mm -hmm. And he was a bit besides that fucking sweet dunk that uh, Io gave him that nice feed. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what I was going to say. Other than uh, not being able to shoot anymore and apparently having a bunch of turnovers, he was dunking on everybody tonight. That was – I wasn't – I'm not used to seeing that from Vooch. And as Stacy would say, he, he was looking rather spry. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Kobe finishes tonight with six for 13, four for six from the field, 16 points, nine boards, five assists. He also had a steal. He had a steal in, um, and only one turnover. Too. Yeah, it was. He was huge. Um, so another great game from Kobe White. I can't wait for that again to go to the bench, um, you know, so he can be the leader of that unit because – God, man, like, think about how bad our bench was. Nine points tonight for them. If Zach would have been in, even had a bad game, Kobe would have still made some shit happen and give that bench a, a better name than Matt Thomas. And we're yeah, just going to really stop is. saying that guy's name. Huh? I'm, we're just going to stop saying that guy's name. I'm not going to Matt Thomas. No, I'm not, not going to acknowledge him by name. Okay, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. 
a guy off the bench that we should acknowledge is Derek Jones Jr. Um, the fact that we heard he was going to be available tonight shocked the shit out of me. Um, the fact that he came in and gave meaningful minutes and obvious pain, too. Um, what did you think about his return and how that kind of came about? Obviously a little bit of mixed emotions. Well, when you see a guy playing injured for his team, given the state of the roster, trying to save us from um, MT. That's what we're going to call him now. Um, saving us from MT minutes and just giving you 25 minutes that were kind of painful to watch because everything he did looked like it caused him pain. Yeah, that dog, um, I felt bad because I saw him get down. Look, he's like, it was so cool looking. He's like, oh, <laughs> you know, just. No, oh, yeah, yeah. On, on that little double clutch lob that he ended up throwing down, or that dunk rather, he uh, he realized it like as soon as he hit both hands on the rim and he just hung the other one off. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> um, so, no, just battling through for the team, though, is something that obviously you appreciate as a fan, but at the same time you want to – it walks that line of is this beneficial enough to, to cost you more time? Right. Um, and tonight it might have been the way that the Bulls played, they needed his energy tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, guy I want to get into to uh finish the, the breakdown of what the Bulls did. Io 42 minutes from him tonight, five for eight from the field, two for four from downtown. He almost had his first career triple double, man. He had 12 points, eight boards, nine assists, one steal tonight. Io was close. And to if Troy Brown down. Jr. Could, could have made any baskets, Io probably has a triple double. <laughs> yeah, right. And Troy Brown Jr. played fucking bad. I didn't want to talk about him. He went 0 for 9 from the field. But he did have, he had 11 boards and three board. of them offensive. Yeah. So, boards. I, yeah, I guess he made up somewhere, you know. But Io had six of his nine assists to Vucevic tonight as well. And uh, Stacy said on the broadcast about how he thinks that Io DeSumo helped unlock Vooch again, basically. You know, that he – he always seems to get Vooch going when he's in the game. And I can't really disagree. It seems like that. I, I wonder what the numbers are, you know, over the last. Yeah, I mean, I would stuff. definitely say the, the numbers sway more towards Io actually passing the ball to Vooch on the roll um, in the pick and roll as opposed to when DeMar and Zach get a screen because they're looking to score just as much as Vooch. So, uh, yeah, no, I mean, Io has definitely brought about the resurgence of Vooch. And it's, it's good to see. I mean, they, they, they've played off of each other. Uh, I.O. being a rookie here with Vooch, he's, he's flirting with a triple-double almost every night. It, it's it's creepy. It, it's so awesome. All-NBA first team written all over him, man. Or all-NBA rookie. I'm sorry. Rookie. <laughs> As you saw, I paused. I yes, like, yes. All <laughs> rookie first team. I apologize. But he should be. He really should be. You know, because even like Stacy was saying tonight on the broadcast about how, you know, they were talking about Giddy and how, you know, good of a rookie he has been and how strong this rookie class has been. It's kind of guys that you didn't expect it to be, too, right? I know Giddy didn't have the greatest game tonight. Um, that was for Lou Dort. That dude is a fucking beast and a half. But, um, you know, the, the rookies of this class are playing great. And, you know, honestly, the rookie in the year is still a kind of a toss up, too. So it, it's just cool to see Io shining in the light of such a talented rookie class, you know? Yeah, I mean, with Cade's injuries, it has kind of left that door open for guys like Franz Wagner and, and uh, Scotty Barnes. Um, but I don't really just the fact that he's contributing on a winning team that's going to be in the playoffs that, you know, has been in first place the majority of the season. Where, where are we now? Are we supposed to be reporting? Um, just don't just. Do the that, fact man. Just the fact that he's contributing. Don't do that, bro. I'm to, getting attacked here. To a winning team, um, I think has to give him extra points because he's taken outside of this stretch here without Zoe and Caruso, uh, more of a backseat uh, and a smaller role, and still contributed a lot um, right. to these wins. As we're now, he is getting to shine and he is getting to go head to head with guys like Giddy uh, and generally getting the best of them. Right. I definitely agree with that. Um, so next game after tonight's game. I'm sorry, the cat keeps jumping on me. He's fucking driving me nuts. And I'm pretty sure there, I saw a mouse. I'm not 100% sure, but if I did again, I'm going to freak out and probably jump on the fucking desk. Not going not gonna to lie to you. It's going to 100% happen. 
The cat was chasing what something. Is, why was... is the cat jumping on you if there's a mouse? That's my main concern right now. <laughs> so I'm pretty much, if that was a mouse, I'm fucked. I'm going to be so scared. It's fucking old school house in these stupid ass basements. Anyway, the Bulls' next game is against San Antonio. That's on Monday at 7 p.m. Um, DeJounte Murray has been playing really good. San Antonio is actually, I think, won three of their last five, if I'm not mistaken. Did they just beat the Cavs? Yeah, I think they did. I'm trying to check on that actually right now. They beat, yeah, no, they lost the Cavs, but they they beat the Hawks and the Pelicans. Okay. Um, which, you know, the Pelicans kind of are struggling. Decent team, but still struggling. But yeah, they play the Bulls on NBA TV at seven. Bulls lost to the uh, Spurs earlier this season. So hopefully DeMar can get his, re- you know, his revenge game. At That's home. right, because we had the Raptors and then the Spurs. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that wasn't good. Yep. So. Hopefully Zach returns for that too, um, you know, and, and Javante will be all right getting a night off. I mean, this schedule is just so crazy. They play so many times. I mean, they play – well, I guess not so many. They have two games left before the All-Star break. So they – Monday and Wednesday. But this is the end of a seven – are you laughing at the cat? It's not, dude, it's not fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm laughing at the cat. It's either that or me because I'm flying, so whatever. All right, anyway, play against um, – San Antonio and Sacramento, and then they go into the all-star break. But, I mean, you have a real chance to win five in a row heading into the break here. I mean, San Antonio, again, they have pop, but they're, they're struggling in Sacramento. Sacramento, I know they've improved with the Sabonis trade. And if DJJ can come back this quick, we might see Pat. <laughs> Who fucking knows, you know? Like- he was on the court last night uh, at the game. We went and watched – we went and watched um pregame shoot around and he was on the court, dude. And he was like busting a sweat. He got a wor- little workout in. He looks like I said, he looks good shooting the shit out of the ball. But I don't think he'll be back until no, until after the all star break. Yeah, yeah. But do you do you think that's realistic? Do you think that's us just talking out our ass and getting a little bit ahead of ourselves? I think we're getting it. Well, I mean, I think we might get a little ahead of ourselves, but I mean, again, we thought that DJJ was coming back around the same time all those guys were coming yeah, back. No, we, we thought six to eight weeks. Right. So, I mean, and how long was that? Was 17 games they said he missed between with the knee injury and then the finger injury. So, okay. So that was about a month, right? About 50, yeah, a month and some change. Yeah, I mean, the way we've been playing games, that might be three weeks. <laughs> yeah, no shit, dude. Seven and 10 nights is a lot. And it brings me back to that. Remember that 2011 season when they started on Christmas and the Bulls would play three nights in a row? Maybe got uh, like, I was so drunk during that time that no, I actually don't really remember. <laughs> <laughs> Well, with that being said, we're going to get out of here. Well, hopefully the Bulls pick up a win against the Spurs on Monday. We'll be back then. Be sure you're going on tapsportsnet.com for all your Chicago sports literature and podcasting needs. Following us on Twitter at Bulls on Tap, at on Tap Sportsnet. Following Goose at Bull Scripted, me at Buzz on Tap. Anywhere you can listen to podcasts, you can listen to us. Five star rating and review because that's what we're tough. Be back on Monday after the Bulls take on the Spurs. Let's go, Bulls.